The renowned Tuacon Center for the Arts attracts visitors from all over the world. You've probably heard that its Broadway quality entertainment is unmatched this side of the Mississippi, but you may not have heard who is the visionary behind Tuacon. His name is Doug Stewart, and I asked him, he did that? When did you get interested in entertainment and the arts? It started in high school, and then uh, college, it, uh, it really became more and more important to me as I uh, continued to do student assemblies, and the only really artistic class I took was uh, playwriting my last year, and that's really when things turned because uh, our assignment was to write a full-length play, and the professor loved my play so much, he produced it the next year. What was it, was it called? It was a major production, A Day and Night and a Day. Okay, I've heard of that. I've seen it. The next thing I wanted to do was write a screenplay and be on the big screen. and So you did that, right? And I went to California and did that, yeah. Doug says his first film bombed, but he later teamed up with Lyman Dayton and made several successful films, among them Where the Red Fern Grows, Against a Crooked Sky, and Seven Alone. He then joined forces with Lex de Azevedo and wrote the phenomenally successful play, Saturday's Warrior. Were you surprised when Saturday's Warrior became such a cultural icon? Oh, absolutely. It was a little bit overwhelming. When it was first done at BYU, uh, it took off like gangbusters. They had to extend it and extend it and extend it. And we saw the writing on the wall. This has commercial value. <laughs> it consumed our life for many years. Wow. It just—it was just one of those magical things that happens, you know, once in a lifetime. Did you ever write a sequel to Saturday's Warrior? I did. Warrior? The sequel, called The White Star, went on tour in 2008. I want to talk a little bit about Tuacon. Yes. What made you decide to put it here in St. George? We moved here in 1983, came here on location to do a film, and the first thing I started uh, imagining was an amphitheater with these beautiful red rock canyons as a backdrop. I thought, what an ideal location. And when I found um, the Tuacon Canyon, it just, it, it came alive, it became real. Where did you get the name, Tuacon? I created it, out of my mind. Oh. <laughs> Near Mexico City is a place called Teotihuacan, and that was where I started, the starting point, and I just played with words and came up with Tuacan. Well, how did such a huge project like Tuacan get started? What was the, the, the push that got it from dream to reality? It was a man uh, by the name of Rick Young and his wife who I presented the idea to over dinner, and uh, he wrote out a check for $50,000. That's what did it. Wow. That's what got it going. That was the seed money I need to do exploration, to look at other facilities around the country, to set up a nonprofit organization, and so forth. Dr. Richard Whitehead brought other investors in to purchase the land, and the fabulous art center that would someday produce Broadway in the desert was born. Doug spent several years as the executive director of the facility, and his wife Mary ran the Tuacon Music School for private students, the forerunner of today's high school for the performing arts. The outdoor musical Utah played in the amphitheater the first four years. Since Doug's talents lay more in the creative arts than in management, he left the facility in 1997. He has since created the Mormon Arts Foundation to encourage LDS artists to create high-quality art. So what's your philosophy of life? Well, I believe we're put on the earth to develop character, and I believe our, our failures and our triumphs and experience uh, all interrelate to help us uh, to become what we're meant to be, and in the process, we serve. Doug and Mary Stewart are enjoying their golden years with their children and grandchildren. We're lucky such gifted and interesting people made their home in southern Utah. For Sun News, I'm Barbara Hanks.